Hi and welcome to Game Creation and in this video what we're going to be doing is uh, in getting the text for our dialog box from an external file. So it's sometimes better and easier um, to have our text stored externally and then import it into the game. Uh, and one of the reasons is you can um, use a spell checker and all that stuff uh, and just keep everything really organised and be able to change um, dialog really really easily. Um, I'm going to do this in a specific way so that I get to use the string parser because I love the string parser object. There are loads of ways of doing this and this is just kind of one way. I might not do it this way, I might do it this way. Um, it kind of depends on the project. Um, but don't see this as the only way of doing this. But um, I think the string parser object is something that I really want to get um, uh, sort of talking about in this video. So I've kind of done it in a way to use the string parser object. So let's get started. So I've just uh, opened up the same project as we used last time. So we've got our nice little dialog or dialog box at the bottom there. At the moment, it doesn't have any text. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, the project assets folder, which is where we stored the array, and I'm going to do a new um, and I want it text, and I'm going to say sort of starting dialog box. I'm just going to name it something easy to remember maybe. <laughs> and what I'm going to say is say um, this world looks sandy or something like that. Okay, save that. Right, so what I want to do is import that text into that text box. So I'm going to have uh, a new area which I'm going to create a new group, call it dialog box and I'm going to say at the start of the frame I want the string to uh, display that text so what I want to do is load that text so where does it say load the text well I can set the text so what you do is you change alterable string but do you see anything there that says load from file Unfortunately not. There's nothing there that says load from file. And the string object has loads and loads of things it can do. It can't do that. So what I need to do is find some way of loading that string and then changing, loading the text and then changing that string to what it has. Um, and what I can do is I can include the string parser object. Now you're not given the string parser object by default. Um, if you haven't got it, go to manager and string parser, oh, if I can spell, <laughs> string parser object. There we are, string parser. And then you click install to install it. And you can notice that the string parser object is really heavily supported. So it's a really nice object to use. And we want to put the string parser there. Now, uh, you don't need to worry about that, just click OK. And you can change that in the settings later on anyway. Um, what the string parser does is it just loves strings and it loves playing with strings. You can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with strings with it. And so what I want to do is I want to load from a file with my string parser. And now, um, so where is it stored? It's stored in our assets folder. So I can just right click that and copy. And then I want to copy this text here, so like that. So that's loading the text. And so when that's loaded, what I want to do is I want to change the alterable string to the string there. Let's see if this works. An application, and this world looks sandy. Perfect. So the string parser has grabbed that from our application uh, from our application file and put it into our game which is really really good um, now just something to be aware of uh, when you have long kind of paths like this this will only work on my machine it won't work on anyone else's computer because it's unlikely that they've um, got the same file structure they might not even have an e-drive but if they do they might not have these folders here so you've got to be really really careful to make sure that you don't 
hard code this. I've hard coded it for the assets and I've hard coded it now for this dialog box, which is not good practice. Um, what I try and do is try and keep these um, videos simple and then go back at a later point and I'll update that and show you how to to have a proper file structure, but that's not for this week. Okay, now what you might want to do though is you might want to um, load multiple um, kind of strings to it. So what I might want to do is if um, the user presses, I don't know, shift, um, then it loads another dialog box. Uh, so it then moves on. So normally what you want is, yep, I've read that, shift, let's have a look at the next one. So we need kind of a way of hooking that in. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to uh, my assets folder and double click that. Now, this word looks sandy. What I want to do is uh, have another sentence in there. So what I'm going to do is do two hash signs and uh, I'm not sure what to do here. Something like that. Now, this is called a delimiter, okay? This is separating what the first bit is from the second bit. And this can be whatever you want it to be. It can be anything. I could have written my name or anything. The important thing is that this shouldn't appear at all in any of the text that you write. So the delimiter has to be something that is only used to separate bits of text. So I've used two hash signs because I'm never going to, I might use a hash sign maybe, chances are I'm not, I'm never going to use two. If you're worried, we could put four and I'm definitely never going to use four. So let's copy that, let's save that and let's go back into here. Now, what I can do with this string parser, I'm just going to create another start of frame, is I can set a delimiter to it. So list tokening delimiter and I'm going to add a delimiter and my delimiter is going to be those four hashes. That's me telling the string parser that any time you see four hashes in a row, uh, that means I want you to break that text up. Now if I run it now, you'll see that it hasn't done anything. It's just showing exactly the same as the text file before. But that's because I've just said grab all of it. I don't want to grab all of it now. What I want to do is I want to get element and I want to, I think it's a one based index. So I think I wanted the first one, but we shall see. So I want the first one, perfect. And then upon pressing shift, I want to get the second one. Let's run it. So that's the first one, it looks sandy. So I press shift. I'm not sure what to do here. So that's perfect. Now it's limited because like then that's it. It's it's game over. Like that's that's the text you're gonna have forevermore. But if you think about like yeah, okay, so this doesn't have to be the second one. This could we could program this to just be the next one. And it's beyond the scope of this video and actually this week to go too deep into this. I think we're gonna have to um use next week or maybe even the week after to have a really powerful dialogue system but you can see the kind of seeds of it now that we can very easily write that text and i can open that in any text editor i want i could open it in word or excel or anything i want and actually excel has a feature which you can um you can save it as a csv now csv just means comma separated values it means the delimiter is a comma so it will put commas between each of the cells. So if you set the delimiter to a comma, and as long as you don't use a comma anywhere in your uh, in your work, which it, it's kind of more more clever than that, but essentially <laughs> um, what Excel does, I think, is it puts quote marks around uh, each bit, um, each like cell. But anyway, that's me rambling way too much. And that's ha the string pass. String pass is so, so useful use it so so many times for all sorts of weird and wonderful things um, uh, um including like um path names and websites and stuff that i want to get data from and 
you can put the delimiter as the forward slash and just find out what part of the website you're on. So it's such a nice, easy object to use, but it's a very, very powerful object as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.